folks. Amen. Welcome to the Sophia Angel and Sophia Camp Meet. Appreciate you being here tonight. Good to be uh, together, uh, together around the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Looking forward to the service tonight. See what the Lord has for us. So we'll get ready to open up in prayer. I want to uh, tell you that we appreciate all of you being here. Appreciate Pastor Ron Davis. Mission Baptist Church being with us tonight. Good to have y'all. We get uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer. I get asked to make some announcements right quick. If I don't do them now, I'll forget them. But uh, uh, car wash, Mike. Car wash this coming Saturday. Yeah. Uh, this is for the uh, teens at Mission Baptist Church. It's at Mission Baptist Church, which is up in Hartsdale on Green Oak. Uh, if you come out, bring your car. If you come here all week, and you need a car a lot. <laughs> but it's uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, just come in around the back, have a single file line, and get you to get you back out on Saturday. Uh, but it is for the team, and we appreciate you coming by. That's this Saturday. This Saturday. And also, uh, Brittany Fields is heading up. Brittany, where are you at? Brittany is heading up a uh, fundraiser on the 25th. Of September, that's at Mission Baptist Church as well, and uh, the money uh, is going to purchase items for OCC shoe boxes. So, uh, y'all uh, got any questions about that? You can see, Brit. Uh, let's get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. And God has been good to us this week, Amen. Amen. And, and uh, we appreciate uh, Brother Mike Halsey and Brother Kenny Greenway being with us, and y'all continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, the services uh, in the mornings have just been wonderful. The evening services have been great. And had a wonderful time of fellowship uh, after the services of the morning with, uh, with good lunches that uh, right. folks have prepared, and so we appreciate them. But, uh, you know, last night, uh, we, I, I asked you to come and let's pray at the altar to prepare our hearts. Uh, folks, I, I tell you, you work today, you've got kids and <laughs> school and, and everything else. And, you know, we got to... When we come to, to worship the Lord, when we come to hear from God, uh, we got to lay those things aside. We got we got to get rid of that so that uh, we can hear the Lord speak to our hearts. And so uh, tonight, as we get ready to uh, go into the service, I invite you to come tonight to pray, and let's ask God to prepare our hearts for what He has for us. Father, we uh, again come before the throne of grace with thankful hearts. Hearts that are just overwhelmed by the way that you love us and care for us. God, we heard this morning about how much you desire to be with us. And God, you, you have that same desire tonight. You want to meet with us. You want to be with us. You want to you want to speak to our hearts. You want to work in our lives. And so, Father, as we come before your throne tonight, we ask that you would just help us. God, help us to humble ourselves before you. Help us to have open hearts and open minds and open ears, God, that we might hear your voice, that we might hear the word of God, that it might find a lodging place in our hearts, that there might be some fertile soil there, God, where your word, the good seed, would find uh, uh, ground that is soft and sensitive and ready to uh, take the, the truth into our hearts that we might be changed, that we might be set free, that we might, uh, God, be washed under regeneration. So, Father, 
as we come before you tonight, we do so with thankful hearts, but we confess tonight that we are a needy bunch, Lord. We need to be drawn closer to you. We need you to be at work in our lives. And, and so, Father, we pray that your will be done in the service. We pray, God, that your work would be done in our lives and that we would not walk out of here the same as we walked in. Father, we pray for Brother Mike Halsey tonight that you would just fill him with your spirit. God, give him the liberty and the unction to preach what you've laid upon his heart. You know what we need tonight, dear God, and he, he can be your instrument for that. And so, Lord, you just uh, you speak to, through him, uh, through him to our hearts, and we'll thank you and praise you for that. Father, as we pray tonight, we do want to remember those that are suffering, those that are sick, those that are grieving. God, we ask that you comfort their hearts. But God, I pray tonight that you, uh, you you just open us up. Let us see ourselves as you see us. And God, you have your way in our lives tonight. Save that one that, that is lost. And God, just strengthen the church. We desperately need revival. And so God, you do that work in us. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. God, we love you. And we only love you because you first loved us. And we give you praise tonight for all that you do and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We got the Baines Trio that is going to minister in small tonight. Amen.
so many people say that God ever failed them. Ever let them down. Praise His name. He is worthy to be praised. Amen? Well, like I say, we've had some wonderful services. If you have missed any of them, you, uh, I guess you can go back and look on uh, Facebook at them or YouTube. Also have CDs back there if you'd like to get copies. But, and, and if there's somebody that you'd like, you, and you sit in here and you hear these messages, you say, boy, I wish this person could hear that. or something. Get the CDs and pass them on to them. Let them hear the Word of God. Amen? So they're back there. Uh, we are uh, going to have uh, uh, services uh, the rest of the week, 1030, but we're also going to, uh, Kenny's got so much to, to share with us that he can't get it all in uh, Friday, and so Monday and Tuesday, uh, we're going to uh, have morning services up at the, at, in the church, and that'll be at 10 o'clock Monday morning and Tuesday morning, and Brother Kenny will be uh, teaching on those uh, Christian disciplines, and I, I'm going to tell you, I want to encourage you, if you if you can be in the services, be there. If you can't, make sure that you go to YouTube or Facebook or, or get the CDs because uh, it is something that every one of us needs to hear. Amen. 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 I know we don't like that word discipline. We don't. We don't want it. We don't want to be disciplined, and we don't want. It. We don't want to discipline nobody else. It's not real popular today. I can tell you right now, folks, if we're going to be what God would have us to be, there's got to be some discipline in our life. There's got to be some things that go on in our life that help us to be more like Jesus. Amen? That doesn't just happen. That's right. But God's given us the means to become more like Christ, being conformed to His image. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's, uh, let's worship the Lord with our giving. If our ushers will come. go down the outside there so they can just pass the buckets down. It's hard for these guys to get up and down the aisle. Uh, John, would you help out and go down that side there? Ed, would you pray for the offer if you would? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we can never thank you enough. Father, we love you. Yes, we do. Just ask you to take Helps us, Lord, to see, bring the word to us. It's get out of Brother Mike, Praise get it into us, Lord. Amen. And then when he gets in us, Lord, let us go out of here and be doers of that word. Amen. 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 Father, we just ask you to take this offering, bless it, the feather of your kingdom. Yes, Lord. Lord. Help us, Lord. Discipline us. Mm. Help us, Lord, what we need. We thank you and praise you for all you do. Be the same. Amen. 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 Thank you.
We're having a good time, aren't we? It's been good. Yes. Can't wait to hear Brother Mike tonight. It's been a blessing. Before I sing, I want to um, just read a little scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, Amen. who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. You know, it doesn't matter what we're going through. If we're going through a trial or tribulation, health issues, uh, troubles at work, whatever it is that we're going through, there's nothing that can comfort us like the peace and comfort of the Lord. Amen. And what a blessing that can be. Yes. So our tribulations turn into blessings. In other words. So that's what this song's about. Blessings. Thank you. 
life. The rain, the storms, the hardest nights are your mercies in disguise. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody in here want to praise the Lord tonight? I tell you folks, I'm just sitting there and the song has been sung. And, and, and you know, we, we sometimes we just think back in our mind to, to how the Lord has brought us from place to place and, and how He had intervened time and time again. Amen. Yes. You know, I was just looking through the Word of God today, and my, my son, you know, if, if you want somebody to talk to you about being in context, now he's one that does that, but he don't believe in this one verse Charlie stuff. You know, he believes everything needs to be in context. And you know, so he's, you know, he, he wants you to think you need to read the chapter before and the chapter after. And, and, you know, and as a young man, that, that's, that's a pretty good position to be in. And, and you know, folks, I, I just thinking back years ago how how we came to, to North Carolina. Well, the, for you to understand the obstacles. That God had brought us through Amen. for us even to stand here tonight. Yeah. It's hard for my mind to fathom. Yeah. It's too big for me. Amen. Too big for me. Lord, we come to you tonight. We realize, oh God, that you're in charge. Lord, you're the you're the Potter, Lord, and I'm just a clay. And I know tonight, Lord, that unless you intervene, unless you take this earth and vessel of clay tonight, Lord, and you would speak life through us, Lord, there's not much going to be accomplished here. But Father, we pray tonight that you would just hide us behind that cross we call Calvary. Lord, that you would just touch us, oh God, once again. With the fire, O oh God, of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, you would cleanse us from the top of our head to the very soles of our feet. Lord, I don't know of a believer. I don't know of the first believer that doesn't need a spiritual bath on a regular basis. And Lord, I pray tonight, God, if there's any here tonight that needs to be encouraged, if there's any here tonight that needs to be challenged, Lord, most importantly, if there's any here tonight, oh God, that needs to be saved, that they would overcome any obstacle, Lord, that would stand between them and You. And God, they would find victory in Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord and our Savior. And the church said, Amen. 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 Well, I tell you what, folks. We have uh, looked in the Scripture for some weeks now. And <clears throat> I know that it's like I told Brother Steve, you know, uh, before I came, you know, and, and I said to him, I said, I'm going to pray about this thing. And, and you know, it didn't take me long because as soon as the aspects like the Lord started dealing with my heart, and I said, how could I first of all ever say no to God? And secondly, how could I say no to my brother in the Lord? Him and Penny, they mean more to me than you'd ever know. And he's been a blessing in my life down through the years. It's like he said the other night, we don't really communicate a lot like we used to. I know we both have 
lives and I'm in Virginia and here's here in North Carolina. But folks, it, it, it's sort of like uh, old David and Lord and Jonathan. And, uh, and, you know, and, and, and I do believe, I, like Paul and Silas, Folks, it's just like when you meet a kindred spirit. Yeah. Doesn't matter where they're at, Brother Ken. Yeah, right. I know you go all over the country, and I guarantee you have a kindred spirit with a lot of people. Yes, and, and you know, when, when you when you get there, or when they, they see you, it's, it's like you've never left. Right. I mean, it's just like it's it, you know, it's, it's just like it was yesterday in that right. regard. But, but folks, if, if I can impress upon you one thing tonight, don't let the obstacles of this life keep you from getting what you need from Jesus. Amen. Now that's where we're going to focus here in the next bit. And tonight, maybe even tomorrow night, <clears throat> I want to close out, Lord willing, with what I believe is a very important message to everyone that confesses Christ. And, and we need to understand this. Who is Christ to you? You need to understand that more than anything else, I believe. Because if you don't understand who Christ is to you, it doesn't matter who He is to anyone else. And we need to know that, folks. Amen? So if you'll get your Bibles with me tonight, <clears throat> we're going to turn to uh, what we're going to use as our opening text tonight. We're going to sort of base what we share in these Scriptures later upon the verses that we're going to look at tonight. And it all pertains to our faith. Do you realize, folks, that the Hebrew writer says, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Who's Him? It's God. Folks, we, we got to believe that, that God is God and, and he's, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask Him for. But folks, let me tell you how He does it. He does it according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. That power is His Holy Spirit. That power is faith in God. And we need to understand that tonight. If you get your Bibles, turn with me to 1 John. <clears throat> Chapter number 5. Let's go ahead and stretch a minute and stand if we can tonight. Let's stand with me for one moment. Verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. You may be seen. You want to turn your Bible to the book of Luke chapter number 8. We'll begin there tonight. <clears throat> I want to tell you this folks that if you are here tonight and you don't know beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the Son of God, you'll never get what you need. You'll never get what you need. If you don't know that as well as you know your name, You'll never get what you need. Folks, we have a world today that names the name of Jesus. We have religions today that name the name of Jesus. Folks, let me tell you something. Even the Muslim religion believes in Jesus. That's right. They said He was a good prophet. Yeah. But folks, they don't believe He was the Son of God. That's there's a lot of mainline denominations tonight. They'll name the name of Jesus, but you can tell by their doctrine and you can tell by the way they believe that they don't believe He's the Son of God. Yeah. Well, preacher, you are not saved that. Well, folks, let me tell you something. If you don't like it, take it up with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> we need to know that He is the Son of God. It doesn't matter about our position. It doesn't matter who we are. 
It didn't matter if we're the lowest of the low or we're ahead of the organization. We better know who Jesus is. You know, I, I like that song. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Amen. Praise the Lord, and I hope you know Him tonight. I hope that you know who He is tonight, folks. Man, I, I, I lived a, a, a big part of my young adult life without knowing who Jesus was. But I want to tell you something, folks. When I found out who He was, He changed my life. Amen. As we were talking, Brother Kenny was talking this morning. Man, when all things become new and all things become... Uh, if you all things pass away and all things become new, folks, it ain't just certain things. It's everything. Amen. I mean, you know, you're a new creature. Amen. Amen. But the one that used to walk around is not there anymore. Amen. There's a new residence. Amen. Somebody has taken up residence Amen. in your heart and in your life. Amen. Oh, say, well, preacher, you know, I, I, I do believe that we're saved and, and I believe we're progressively sanctified and, and then you better watch that word progressive because there's a religion out there today that you better stay away from. Amen. But folks, I want you to know something, folks. It is, it, it, salvation is a process. Amen. How many's arrived here? How many's been transformed into the very likeness and image of your Savior? None of us. You know why, folks? Because we're still carrying around this corruptible. Right? Right. Right. We're still carrying around this mortal. One day we'll lay this corruptible down yeah. and we'll take on right. immortality. Right. Amen. Right. When we see Jesus, oh, we'll yeah. be like him to him. Yeah. Yeah. That ought to make even the Baptist yeah. shout. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Folks, we, we are blessed people to be children of God. Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, if you got your Bible and you turn with me to Luke, if you would, chapter number 8. I, I want to talk about a couple people tonight that had to overcome obstacles. Amen. Amen. You know, I could get off on tangents and, and, and I could tell you about the obstacles I overcome. I, I started because if you read the, uh, the, this, this same uh, uh, message, if you would, or story or truth, I, I don't even like to call it story. I like to call it truth. Right. If you read this same truth over in, in Mark's gospel, chapter number 5, folks, uh, you're going to find there in, in chapter number 5 that it doesn't begin uh, with the story of Jairus. It begins uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, the Lord crossing over, if you would, the lake and the storm coming. And guess what? They went to the land of the Gadareans and there was an individual there, uh, if you would, that lived in the tombs among the dead. Yeah. Oh my goodness, without getting too much into that, folks, I want to tell you, he had to be a frightful individual. You know, the Bible says that his name was Legion. The Lord asked him what his name was. And let me tell you something, folks. A legion, if you relate it to a Roman army, is about 6,000 soldiers. Now, brother, that's a lot of demons. And you know what, folks? I don't believe any of us should ever store up more demons than when cast out. Amen. 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 So before you get off on the tangent, before you think you're the, the Energizer Bunny, you better pray through and make sure that the Holy Ghost is leading. Amen. Amen. Because, folks, I want to tell you something, that I have encountered some princes of darkness even here in High Point, North Carolina. Got to tell you this one. I was on my way to work uh, uh, one morning, you know, and uh, uh, worked uh, at a little place called uh, Brett Floor Covering. Ain't that right, Sharon? Uh, anyway, Sharon was, was there as well, and, 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 and I had to get to work by 8 o'clock, and, and I had to stop and see a, a car salesman before I got there. So I stopped at this place, and lo and behold, I went up and, 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 and looked in there and, and there wasn't nobody there. I went down the lobby, you know, and, and down in the lobby, there was a, a, a gentleman, let me say that, gentleman that was down there, had on a big old trench coat, had a big old floppy hat on, and had dark sunglasses, I mean dark sunglasses, sitting in the lobby 
at 8 o'clock in the morning, or actually before 8. And, and I walked down there, and the Lord says, you need to talk to that man about his soul. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. I could tell you stories for a week to where I've talked to people about their soul. And I walked up to that man, and I want to tell you something, folks. As soon as I got within a close distance of him, I said, my goodness, there's something going on here. And I said, I want to tell you something, sir. I don't know your name. What's your name? John. I mean, he about growled at me. John. And, and I said, John, I want to tell you something. The Lord wanted to come down here and talk to you about your soul. He turned his head, folks, and never will forget this. He turned his head opposite of me and talked to someone there and says, I don't want him to proselyte to you. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. That's about how it sounds. And, and I, I mean it, folks. It, it, was, it was something you just don't encounter every day. And so I, I basically, I, I just uh, spoke to him a minute. And I could see right away he, he, he didn't want nothing to do with what I had to say. And I got up and, and, and I was getting ready to go out and head my way to work that morning. And, and when I come up the steps to go out the door, there's two salesmen stopped me there. It says, hey, what's the story on that dude down there? I said, well, his name's John and he's demon-possessed. He, he told me he was a demonologist. He did. He said, I'm a demonologist. Don't want you proselyting to me. And anyway, and, and I, I said, well, I've done what I feel like I needed to do there. And, I, and, and folks, let me tell you something. I, how I know that God lives and dwells in my heart. I was on my way to work and all of a sudden I started tearing up and my heart broke. My heart literally broke. And, and, and I was thinking, what's going on here? And the Lord said, you need to go back and give Him one more chance. Folks, I kid you not, I was crying like a baby for a man that normally in the flesh would scare me to death. I turned around and went back in there and walked back down there and the Lord told me to tell him that life and death was before him today and he needed to choose life. Now there again, not getting into all the details of what went on, but, but the bottom line was this, he didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. So I left out of there, and folks, as soon as I walked outside, that burden left me. That heaviness and that burden left me. Why? Because I've done what the Lord wanted me to do. I overcome my opposition, which was fear, amen, and I've done what the Lord wanted me to do, and I told Him about Jesus, and He rejected me. Now folks, I want to tell you something. In here on Monday night, I was preaching my heart out best I could anyway in, in flesh and blood, uh, uh, hoping and praying that the Holy Ghost was leading and guiding in every way. But folks, you know, and I know many of you came to the altar that night and, 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 and I asked you to talk to the Lord about your soul, and, and many did. And I hope and pray that, that it's well with your Amen. soul tonight. Amen. But folks, I want to tell you, I looked out in the congregation and there was tears running down people's cheeks. I could tell they were heavily under burden. And if it was up to me, I would have carried you down to the altar and, and had you to talk to Jesus. But folks, it don't work that way. Right. It just doesn't work that way. Whosoever will may come. Not whoever the preacher wants to comes. Right, right, Amen. Right, right. <clears throat> Brother Steve, wouldn't you uh, uh, like to have been able just to go over and just touch somebody and they come to Jesus? Amen. My goodness, I'd be laying hands on everything at once. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way, folks. i got to get on here. Amen. We all have to deal with opposition in our life. There's not the first one of us came to Christ without first opposition. That's right. You know, a lot of people think, uh, well, becoming a Christian is easy. All you've got to do is just 
go down there and say a few words and it's all done. And, and let me tell you something, folks. There's a lot of, if you would, featherweight theologians will tell you all you got to do is just repeat this prayer and you're in the heaven. Yeah, right. I want to tell you something, folks. If the Holy Ghost is not drawing you, uh, it's John chapter uh, 6, verse 44. It's not been working in your life. Uh, no one comes unto the Father unless the Spirit draws him. That's right. If the Holy Ghost is not drawing you, folks, I don't care how good the preacher is. Amen. I don't care if he's got long hair like Brother Kenny or he's bald-headed like me. It doesn't matter if it wasn't the Holy Ghost, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. This, this cut it on, cut it off, I get saved any time I want to uh, kind of concept. No, sir. It's straight out of the pits of hell. Amen. That's right. That's right. You better, you better take heed when the, when the Lord comes. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. You better listen up when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of that yes, heart sir. and squeezes it right there. Amen. 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 Because folks, not only in the time of, 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 of the wilderness journey, when God was taking His children out of Egypt to a promised land. Folks, I want to tell you something. Not only when He said back then, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart back in the Old Testament, yeah. it still works today. Amen. 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 It still yeah. works today. Praise the Lord, preacher, get into the Word. I hope I'm preaching to the Word already. But anyway, if we get in here in, in Luke chapter number, if you would, 8, beginning there with verse number uh, 40. And it came to pass that Jesus returned the people gladly, received Him, for they were all waiting for Him. Let me tell you something, folks. A lot of times when people hear about the miracles of God, about, about the good, exciting things that are happening, a lot of people are wanting to see. Amen. Do you realize, folks, uh, there's a lot of people today that's waiting for God to do something? There's a lot of people today that, that's wanting to see a sign or a wonder. Amen. Amen. Folks, let me tell you something. I believe in Pentecostal. Amen. I, I believe in, in, in Acts. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Amen. Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Amen. Folks, I believe in that old-fashioned Holy Ghost power. Amen. But folks, I want to tell you something. I don't believe that we can muster it up. That's right. I don't believe we can doctrinize it. I don't believe that we can bottle it up. And if you would, if you would, just do anything we want to with him. That's right. Folks, I want to tell you, the wind blows where it listens. That's right. And we hear the sound there, uh, but we can't tell whence it's coming. Yeah. Or even where it's going. Yeah. Come on. Well, one thing's for sure. When the winds are blowing, you know it. Amen. Amen. When the wind is blowing, praise God, you know it. Amen. And that's when we respond to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And behold, there was a, a man named Jairus, and, and he was a ruler of the uh, synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come unto his house, for he had a, a little doll, only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. She lay dying. And we need to understand something here, folks. We're not talking about just the ordinary individual here when we're talking about Jairus. We're talking about somebody that was a leader in the right. synagogue. Yeah. We're talking about somebody who had religious authority. Yeah. We're talking about somebody that basically could tell people who could come in and worship and who couldn't right. come in and worship. Amen? Right. And folks, I want to tell you something. 
for him to leave his position of authority, for him to leave the synagogue and to come to a little old Nazarene carpenter, amen, and fall down at the feet of Jesus and say, Jesus, oh, I need you to come to my house. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Folks, that's quite, quite a show. Amen. Yeah. Folks, I want to tell you, there's a lot of people today that's over uh, religions and it's over, uh, if you would, religious organizations. Folks, I want to tell you something. Even though they named the name of Jesus, they would not publicly humble themselves in any way. That's right. But this man, he was serious. You know what, folks? <laughs> When the situation gets bad enough, yes, sir. Yeah. you'll get serious. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. When the situation gets bad enough, you'll get serious with God. Does that sound right to you? Yes, <clears throat> he knew that it wasn't, it wasn't based on his authority that his daughter lived. Amen. Yeah. My goodness, he was a ruler of the synagogue, had a big position. Amen. Oh, I guarantee he could, he could probably quote the Torah, amen. Yeah. But folks, let me tell you something. It's not about your position. It's not about your religion. It's right. not about your man-made authority. Right. It's about do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sure. All right. Oh, my goodness. Would you come to my house, Jesus? He fell down at Jesus' feet. For he had a daughter of 12 years of age as at the point of death here, folks, she was dying. And guess what? Jairus got interrupted. Yeah. Let me tell you something, folks. How many times have you really wanted to have a Jesus encounter and somebody interrupted you? <laughs> My goodness, I don't care, Brother Kenny. You know, I can remember years ago when I when I had a minute, when I was in high point, you know, you know, I was, I was working full time, going to Bible college, driving the church bus, on the church board, teaching Sunday school, folks, and when I had a minute, seems like and uh, to, to be with God, that old phone would ring or somebody would yeah. try to get a hold of me. And, and I tell you folks, it becomes challenging. Sure, sure. Amen. And I struggled at times in some of what should have been the best years of my life. Because I couldn't tell people no. Amen? Yep. Let me tell you something from someone that's been there and done that. A certain people you need to say no to. Because if you've got a plate and it'll hold so much. I want to tell you, there's a lot of good time Charlies want to come over and fill your plate. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wish, I wish I would have said no, if you would, to a lot of people and a lot of things and said more yeses to my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's good preaching. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's good preaching. Because, folks, I had time for everybody and everything because of Jesus, but didn't have time for the most important person that Jesus gave me, and that was my wife. I hope that resonates real well with some of you here tonight. Because, folks, I want to tell you something. The old devil tried his best to tear down that house. Brothers do. But I had brothers and sisters that knew how to pray. And I didn't lose my faith in God. Amen. Amen. I believed in Him and I trusted in Him. Hallelujah. Even though sometimes the road gets mighty rocky and rough. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm not preaching to anybody. Amen. Come on. Jarius was in a situation here. He wasn't worried about his position over the synagogue. Right. He wasn't worried about what some of them Pharisees and Sadducees may say to him. Amen. Right. Right. He went over, and what did he do? He fell down, Brother oh, Kenny, right at Jesus' right. feet. Amen. 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 He humbled himself before God Almighty. Amen. 
And guess what it done? It got Jesus changing his direction. I believe, I believe Jesus, I listen to this, listen, I believe Jesus was headed to Jairus at the synagogue, and yet Jairus came to Jesus, and then neither one of them went to the synagogue, they went to Jairus. Amen. And preach. Folks, he, he, he fell out. I have to believe there's some worship in that, amen. Yeah. I have to believe there's not only some worship, but I have to believe that there was some faith. Yeah. There was some faith in that, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's an evidence of things. It's only by faith that the elders obtain a good report. Amen. Right. Right. Praise the Lord. Oh, and then there was an interruption. Ew, yes, there was, and it had to be a woman. I don't mean that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't mean that, ladies. I, I just I just had to say that. Uh, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living on physicians. Neither could be healed of any. Came behind him. I gotta stop right there, man. Now folks, we need to get this. This woman had an issue. She had a major issue, Brother Kenny. See, she'd been put out of the synagogue for 12 years. Guess who probably put her out? Oh, Jairus. Oh, Jairus. Yeah. You know, and now she's over here messing with his, his opportunity. And here she was, had an issue of blood. I'm not going to get into that. Ladies or gentlemen, but I want to tell you something. There's issues of blood that, that, that women have to deal with. But could you imagine having to deal with an issue of blood for 12 years? Could you imagine that? But let me tell you the deal here. This woman tried everything that she could to find relief and find healing from that. She went to many doctors. And I don't know what they would do. I, I know today they can give you medication so your blood will clot. You know, they can do things like that, right? They've got that available. My wife was telling me the other day something. She showed me. She says, if you ever get a cut on your arm, you can take this right here and it'll stop the blood. And I thought to myself, my goodness, I've had the Holy Ghost to do that before. <laughs> I was working in a, a, a factory and, and my goodness, just got through going to the nurse just recently. And, my, and, and there I was. I, I, I was undoing a crate and the next thing I know, I hit that hit that, that piece of wood on that crate and the end of that uh, wood went flying over and popped me right in the jaw and the nail went right to my jaw. And I had to go, I had to go to the nurse. And folks, the thing about this, it's not the problem. I'm not scared of, ne I'm not scared of needles or nurses or, any, or even doctors. Here was what I was concerned about. Had to fill out a big accident report. <laughs> My goodness, I don't even like filling out taxes. And I know I don't want to fill out them accident reports. But we filled one out. And just right after that, you know, I, I, I run a shear machine at that time. Big old machine that cuts these these uh, aluminum uh, uh, sheets and cuts the ends off of them. You know, and, and then you throw the excess into a dumpster. Well, I kept throwing that over in the dumpster and throwing it over in the dumpster. And before long, folks, the dumpster was full and running over. So I just didn't try to work hard and, you know, and in a hurry. Next thing I know, folks, I didn't walk by that thing and one of them pieces didn't grab me by the arm. Yeah. 
And I want to tell you something, folks. One of the first miracles I've ever seen God do in my life. I looked down there and just as that thing started turning the white, getting ready to burst open, and you know what comes next? I laid my hands on there and I started praying. I said, Jesus, I know that you're the Son of God. Amen. Jesus, I know that you can heal this, this woman. I don't want to, Jesus, go back and see that nurse again today. <laughs> I did. I said, Jesus, I don't want to go back and see her again today. I lift my arm up and folks, my hand off my arm, and I want to tell you something, folks, all I saw was a white scratch down to the Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Was that some kind of a, a something I've done? Absolutely not. All I've done is ask and he done the work. Praise the Lord. Here we go. She went 12 years. Praise the Lord. I'm dying halfway going on back. Go ahead. Praise the Went 12 years to no avail. Matter of fact, she spent all she had. <clears throat> And she grew worse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, folks, I want to tell you something. I thank God for doctors and I thank God for nurses. But it sort of gets on my skin sometimes when, when they supposedly going to do whatever it is to take care of the problem and it doesn't take care of the problem, but boy, they don't mind sending you the big bill anyway. Are you with me? Has anybody been there? Here it is. Folks, she said, she said, if I could just touch his She came up behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately, folks, immediately her issue of blood stinks to dry up. It was over. Hallelujah. Folks, let me tell you something. When God touches you, do you know He touched you? Amen. Yeah, 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 when God yeah. touches you, do you know it's been taken yeah, yeah, yeah. care of? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to tell you, this woman, she sensed the very instant that that virtue, that goodness, that power of God went out of Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. into her. But she knew that she was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord! Yeah, yeah. And Jesus said, oh, it's good. And Jesus said, who touched me? Yeah. Do you think he really didn't know who touched me? <laughs> oh, I, I like this. And, when the, and, and, and whenever they all looked, and all of them denied, oh, I didn't touch it, Rabbi. It wasn't me. Everybody, everybody just throwing him and grabbing him and pushing on him and it wasn't me. They didn't want, they didn't want to be blamed for anything. And Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude is throwing thee and, and pressing thee and, 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 and sayest thou who touched me? Jesus, they're all around you. Everyone else is trying to get up close and personal to you. Jesus, everybody has touched you. Oh, but that's not what he's asking. Right. Jesus said, somebody touch me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something here tonight, folks. If Jesus touches you and the virtue of God comes in you, your problem's taken care of. Hey, right. 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 That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Your problem is taken care of. Amen. And when the woman saw that, that, that she was not hid, she listened to this, she came trembling. Why did she come trembling? You've got to understand this, folks. Because she had an issue of blood, she shouldn't be in the crowd. Because she had an issue of blood, not only by touching Jesus, anybody that she rubbed against was unclean. And folks, it's going to knock them out while they're going in the synagogue. Because she polluted them. Yes. I know that's a bad way to look at it, but it's the truth in the, in the religious way of thinking. With, you know, in the, in the Jewish frame of mind. Who touched me? And one woman saw that she couldn't hide it. 
She came trembling and fell down like old Jairus before him. And she declared unto him before all the people what caused she had to touch him and how she was healed immediately. She had to confess it. She had to confess it. She said, I know I shouldn't have been here. I know by the, by the, by the law I should not be here. I know by the law I shouldn't be rubbing shoulders with anyone. Let alone, I know, Jesus, I shouldn't be touching you, if you would, as a rabbi. That's right. You know what? I thank God Jesus is not religious. Amen. 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 I thank God that He didn't scorn that woman. There'd be a lot of religious Amen. folks that scorn somebody. Amen. Amen. Oh, there'd be a lot of religious folks scorn people yeah. if, if they get out of order. Amen. Or they do something that don't comply with their doctrine or teaching. Amen. Amen. Oh, what did he say unto her? He said, yeah. daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made Praise thee whole. Go on. Amen. Don't you worry about that, daughter. You had enough faith in me to worry it worked for you. Amen. 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 He worked. Why? Because you were willing to to believe. Amen. You were willing to trust. That's right. And while he yet spake, there came one of the rulers of the synagogues from his from the synagogue's house saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. Now folks, I want to tell you something. You've always going to have a bad news Charlie. Yes, yeah. You're always going to have a, a bad news Dale or Kathy or, or whatever. And if it's your name, I'm not talking about you. It says Steve. Steve, you're always going to have a bad news Steve. But folks, let me tell you something. We cannot allow the negativity of other people Boy, to keep us from getting yeah, what yeah, Jesus yeah. wants us to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And while he's at speaking, here comes a, one of the a people from the a, a synagogue rulers' home said, Hey, your daughter's dead. Don't bother Jesus anymore. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Fear not. Why? Because he knew the first thing the devil was going to do was going to create major fear in Jairus' heart. Yeah. said, Fear not. Only believe and she shall be made whole. Oh, Folks, let me tell you something. If you would get past the fear yeah. and you would believe Amen. You know, I, I, I told someone before we left on our trip, you know, said, one more worry. I said, why worry when you can pray? Yeah, amen. Amen. Folks, I want to tell you something. We don't need to fear what have we to dread, what have we to fear when we're leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. 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 And while he yet speak, here come the bad news. And when Jesus heard that, he calmed that fear by saying, Don't fear, only believe, and she'll be made whole. And when they came into the house, he suffered no one to go up, say Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the damsel. <clears throat> and, all, and all the people there, were, they wept. And bewailed her. <clears throat> Folks, let me tell you, what happened there was there was a whole lot of crying and weeping and pitching fits going on. You know, the other portion of the gospel, Jesus said, Why is all this a do? Yeah. What's all this stuff? We not. She is not dead, but asleep. Yeah. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. Folks, let me tell you something. 
Nothing is dead until God deems it dead. No one's leaving this world until God deems them to leave this world. They laughed at Jesus when He made that statement. He put them all out. Let me tell you something, folks. Sometimes the best thing you can do if you want to believe God for a healing or a miracle or, or anything is, is just get rid of them naysayers. Amen? Just get rid of them. Don't, don't be around them. Say, so, hey, if that's all you can do, I'm leaving. Amen. And he put them all out and he took the damsel by the hand. Amen. Took her by the hand. And, and called, saying, Made her rise. Arise. And the Spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and He commanded to give her meat or food. And her parents were astonished, but He charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Now folks, <clears throat> here we are. Jairus, Jairus rather, could have allowed the bad news to hinder his daughter's resurrection. Matter of fact, if you, if you read this in the other portion of the gospel back in Mark, he says he commands to give this young and something deep. Many people believe that she was in a diabetic coma. That's why, that's why he said, give her something to eat. You know, folks, if, if you don't eat and you've got bad sugar levels, you know you can just blank out. If your sugar's too high or your sugar's too low, you can... <clears throat> But I do believe this, that Jesus knows how to cure them pancreases. He knows how to adjust them diabetes. Yes, sir. He can do it all, but one thing's for sure, he knew that what they done and needed something to eat. Now folks, I want to tell you something here tonight. I don't know what you think about Jesus. I don't know what you believe when it comes to the Son of God. But I want to tell you this upon the authority of God's Word. There's nothing impossible with God. Amen. If you're here tonight and you need the Lord to touch you, <clears throat> if you're here tonight and you need God to intervene for you, let me tell you something, folks. I believe if you put your faith in God, He can move a mighty mountain. Amen. If you put your faith in God, He can calm that raging sea. What's hindering you tonight? What's your opposition between you and God? Folks, I want to tell you, I had to overcome many oppositions to be where we are tonight. Yes, sir. And I can tell you story after story after story. You know what? It means a whole lot to me, but it might not mean as much to you. Probably won't mean very little to you. But I want to tell you something. You've got a story tonight. Every one of you have got a story tonight. But here's what I want to ask you tonight. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hey, yes, I'm going to ask you to stand if you would. <clears throat> Here's a sweet piano lady if you'd come and play for us. Sister.
Is there someone or something hindering you in Jesus? Folks, sometimes it may be a good friend. Sometimes it may be a co-worker. Sometimes it may be even a spouse. I want to tell you something, folks. I have seen the burden on many brothers and sisters' lives where well, one of them was right with God and the other one didn't want nothing to do with Him. Now if you're here tonight and you've got a loved one or you've got somebody that's not right with the Lord, let me tell you something. Don't you let this devil throw you that bad news. You're just wasting your time. Don't trouble the Master. You come up here and get on your knees. And you talk to Jesus. Yeah. And you say, Jesus, I've got this in my life. Jesus, I've got this hindering me today. And I want to tell you something, folks. If you'll believe God and you'll trust God, He can work. That's right. That's right. Here's about how I'm going to God speak to your heart tonight. Don't don't let anything hinder you. Don't let anything hinder you from coming and bowing at his feet as Jairus and this woman with the issue of blood. Sometimes we just need to humble ourselves before God. He knows what our problems are. He knows what the hindrances are, the opposition is. He knows. So oftentimes He just wants us to confess that there's that issue. There's that need in our life. We need Him. God's speaking to you. You come tonight. Brother Mike made mention of Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews said that without faith it is impossible to please Him, please God. But he that cometh to Him must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. God rewards faith. He rewards those that reach out to Him in faith. God help us. Help us, Lord. God speaking to you? Why don't you come to us? to you tonight and we want to thank you and praise you for the word of God. 
We thank you for those accounts that are recorded there and how you use those accounts to speak to our hearts. God, I doubt there's a person standing here under this shed tonight that doesn't have some kind of need that they know is, is there in our lives and yet, God, there's some kind of opposition before us getting to you. So, God, we need you. Lord God, we need you. We need you in our lives. We need you in our homes. We need you in our marriages. We need you as parents. We need you as, as, as witnesses. We need you as workers tonight. God, we desperately need you, but so oftentimes there are those obstacles in the way of us drawing nigh to you. Even though you have promised us if we will draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to us. Father, we know tonight that we need to get close to you. We know tonight that we need to be able to not only touch you, but have you touch us. Yeah. Father, you know every need that has been represented here tonight as they have built in prayer. Yeah. As Brother Mike has reminded us, there's nothing impossible with you. There's not a bondage that can't be broken. There's not a, a problem that can't be healed. And so God, we just want to come to you tonight and, and confess first and foremost that we believe tonight that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and we believe He has the power to heal and He has the power to restore. He has the power to renew. And Father, praise God, we know tonight that Jesus has the power to save. Amen. Right. So Father, we thank you for what you've done here. We thank you for what you're going to continue to do as, as, as your word goes forth. We, we know, God, tonight that it has a, has a power to uh, divide asunder and reveal the thoughts and the intentions of our heart. So God, as we leave from here tonight, may your word continue to do its work in us. May the Holy Spirit continue to touch our hearts. Amen. God, I pray that, that you just... Uh, have your way in our lives. Thank you for the message. Thank you for Brother Mike. Amen. Thank you for the liberty that he had tonight to yes, preach. We give you the praise for that. Hallelujah. God, go with us. Keep us safe. Lord, bring us back at the next appointed time. We just want to tell you we love you. Amen. God, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.